Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell. I haven't talked about blogging in a while, and since that's one of the things that I'm kind of known for, I figured it's probably time that I do something about blogging. So today, it's going to seem like I'm going backwards a little bit to beginners, people who are new to blogging, but truthfully, there's people who they will tell you they blog for a while, but they've stopped. For whatever reason, they just stopped writing. They just gave it all up. Uh, or they say, well, I just don't know what to do. Well, you know, blogging is an interesting thing because in a way you have to think of how you used to write when you were in school. And I don't mean like term papers or whatever specifically. I mean basically the process. For instance, if you were someone who hated writing in high school and you hated writing in college, you're probably going to hate writing a blog. I just have to tell you that. Now, if you hated writing assignments but you wrote other stuff, then maybe you still have a chance. Yeah, you know, I was one of those kids who I used to write poems. I actually used to write plays, believe it or not. I wrote music. I wrote lyrics. And then I gravitated towards writing, you know, more serious things. You know, I've written two books on leadership. But I've been a blogger for at least 10 years now. And right now I have five blogs. Yeah, I got five blogs. All of them don't get the same attention. But, you know, this is what I do. So I like to think that I know at least a little bit of something about blogging. No one else does. Uh, no one else thinks I know anything. But you know, hey, you know what? You get 10 years. You know, longevity has its place. So I'm going to give you three things to think about if you're either a new blogger or you're thinking about blogging or maybe you're someone who just kind of lost your way a little bit. I'm here to encourage you. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking about starting a new Google Plus group basically encouraging blogging because there's a lot of groups out there but most of them are just posting blog posts about anything and you know whatever and I've been taking a look at them and I'm not seeing what I'm looking for so if you like this kind of video you might like this particular Google Plus page I'm thinking about doing so let's look at these three things the first one is the, abil uh, the ability to write frequently now by that I don't mean you have to write every single day I really don't mean that what I basically mean is frequently over a period of time. For instance, right now, because I'm concentrating on some other things, I'm basically saying that I'm going to try to write on each one of my blogs at least once a week. Now, I'm very good at that with at least three of them. The other two, you know, I'm a little here and there. But still, the basic idea is to be able to do that. Now, the thing is, I've been writing one of my blogs for 10 years. Another one, I'm coming up on eight. And all the others are at least three years old. Well, actually, one is new for this year. So I at least know that I can write whenever I'm in the mood, if I have the time to do it. But some people don't really know if can I write more. One of the suggestions I usually make is to sit down before you start blogging, come up with your topic or topics or whatever, and then write 10 articles. Write 10 articles before you do anything else. If you can write 10 articles, then you can pretty much go for it. Now, that may sound like a tough chore, but here's the reason you do that. The reason you do that is because now when you create your blog, you actually have 10 posts to get things started. You don't post them every single day. You give yourself some space. But at least you have 10 articles that you know, hey, look, I got 10 articles in. And if you never write another thing, which I hope you do, but if you never write another thing, you at least have 10 articles. So that's the first thing. That's the first test. The second one is the ability to create a dream. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth here. There's a lot of bad <laughs> writers that just are. I read a ton of blogs. Trust me on this. I've always read a ton of blogs. And one of the things that sometimes surprises me isn't that someone is a bad writer, but it's that they are able to attract a lot of people. There are just some folks who just have the worst grammar. They, they misspell a lot of words. They have no clue. They don't go clean anything up. They'll skip words here and there. But they get a great following. And I got to tell you the truth. I've been troubled by that sometimes because I sit there and say, wait, I go back and I try, you know, to correct any spelling errors. Every once in a while, I leave out a word, but it's not all that often. Sometimes I actually type a word that's legitimate, but it's not the word I meant at that time. And I will fix things. I'm always editing, you know, whether I catch it up front or on the back end. But there's a lot of these blogs that don't do that. 
there's a lot of bloggers who lately have been saying, well, you should be writing long posts, anywhere from 3,000 words to 10,000 posts, uh, 10,000 words every single post. Whew. Let me tell you something. My post last week was 3,200 words. That was a fluke. And I just, I had something that I really wanted to say, and I got very detailed on it. So it ended up being 3,200 words. Trust me, my post, my next post was not that many words, nowhere close to it. I don't know who really wants to read that all the time, but you know what? There are people that seem to do it. The thing is that sometimes they ramble. I mean, if your intention is really to get to three to 5,000 words every single week, you're going to start rambling unless you have some kind of detail, some kind of reference, some kind of research that you've done, or maybe you're going to review something. You know, that's a bunch of words for every single week. It just is. Trust me on this. Uh, I mean, like I said, if I'm writing five blogs, I may end up writing 3,000 words total, but that's over five different subjects, sometimes six or seven. So that's rough. But if you can communicate a dream, get people to understand, hey, look here, this is my dream, and you get them enthusiastic about it, then you've got yourself a built-in audience, and you've got an audience that will be loyal to you. So that's number two. And then the final thing is the ability to be authentic. Now, this might seem one of those strange kind of things that you sit there and say, okay, this just sounds kind of metaphysical or goofy or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, I like to believe that people know if you're being authentic about stuff. You can be truthful. You don't have to tell every single thing about it, but you have to be somewhat authentic. Like when I wrote my post that I will link to here at some point, since I'm doing this in advance and I'll post it, whatever. Um, I wrote this post about link, uh, Twitter and how I basically market myself on Twitter. And it was 3,200 words, and it was as authentic as it could be, but it was more of a research thing. This was me teaching. My latest post is me kind of ranting about people who set up their blogging systems, the commenting system, so that if you leave a comment and you pick the thing saying that you want to receive comments, they send you a stupid email saying, are you sure you want to get comments? I'm sorry, if I clicked it, I want comments. <laughs> okay, I'm just telling you, that. that's me. If I clicked on it, I want to see comments. Don't send me other mess. I get too much email as it is. Anyway, that post is definitely authentic because I'm kind of ranting about something I, that I really don't like. Sometimes I'm passionate about something that I like. You know, you have to show some kind of authenticity. I think people can read when you're kind of fake about stuff. You know, if I ever start writing great things about cars, then I'm probably, for the most part, kind of fake, unless it's a car I just bought, or if it's something that is just so extremely cool that I'm going to write about. Because I don't know anything about cars. I just don't. So I don't talk about cars all that often. I do have one old post that I did something about Cuban cars because it was something I found out. I didn't realize that Cuba was driving all these really old cars from the 40s and 50s because they didn't have access to new cars. I think that's kind of cool. I just do. So that's what I mean. You have to somehow get your authenticity out. Now, you might find some difficulty doing that. You know, when I first started doing videos, I certainly wasn't authentic at all because I didn't know how to do it. I mean, I thought that everything had to be perfect, so I was I was speaking like this, and I wanted to make sure that every single word that I said was easily understood. And there was no emotion. There was no authenticity to it whatsoever. So if I did that with video, imagine that there are people who are doing that while they're writing their blogs. It's just the way it is. I think there's a lot of really authentic, authentic people who write their blogs. I see it all the time. And then there's a lot of garbage. I hate to say this, a lot of guest posts are garbage because there's no authenticity in it. Yes, they've done some research and they've written something, but there's no emotion to it. There's no life to it. It's just there. Probably one of the gripes I have with guest posts. Whenever I've written a guest post for someone, you can bet that thing's live. There's got some authenticity in it. It's got some emotion in it. It's got some life. But that's just me. Anyway, let's tick those off again. Number one, the ability to write frequently. The ability to communicate a dream is number two. And number three is the ability to be authentic. Anyway, those are my points. What do you guys think? Let me know below. As this guy Dame Drops usually says, if you like it, 
Give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But don't be giving any thumbs down. Give me comments. And you know what? Share this thing. I will ask you, share it with other people. Let them see what I'm talking about. And if you leave a comment, then they'll see what you had to say. Anyway, like I said, I'm Mitch Mitchell. Y'all take care.